to disagree. But when the dust settles, it's all got to be pleasing to God. So as I think it, do I really believe what I'm doing is for God? Whether I'm Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic, Presbyterian, doesn't matter. It all falls under Protestants. I'm not trying to get all technical or whatnot, but Protestant, if you believe in Jesus, you fall under the Protestant category. But I'm Baptist. Well, that's fine. I'm Pentecostal. This is a holy church, sanctified church. That's fine. But when you go to get ready for surgery, you're filling out uh, that little form just in case you slip away from here on the operation table. They say, what is your religious identity? And folks don't even put that in there right to the side. They're right to the side, Pentecostal. No, no, but you fall under Protestant. Why do I ask you that? Because if you slip, they need to know which chapter to call. Y'all, y'all, (laughs) y'all. But we get caught up in the name game. I'm a man. True. You're a woman. True. But we all is chicks. There is no man God, and there is no woman God. There is only one God. And he says, suffer all my little children. Hello. Now, you could want a boy, but if God gives you a girl, you better make do with what she got. Because they all are blessings from who? God. So when it comes to my everyday approach in life, how do I deal with me? Because I don't have to deal with you, per se. I've really got to deal with me. Am I pleased with who I am? Am I pleased in how I represent God? Am I pleased in who I associate myself with? So, therefore, what you think about me don't mean a hill of beans. It's what I think about myself in return giving back to God the very best that I can be. Does that make sense? Because you could think I look ridiculous in my outfit. But if I think I look good, does it really matter what you think? Because when you get to talk, what am I? They just jealous. They just hey, y- y'all are seeing for you that Lord have mercy just because they sell it in your side don't mean you need to buy. <laughs> Some of you say, well, they obviously don't have a mirror in the house. But if I think I look good as a man thinking, I appreciate your comment, but to do. It's ain't about you, it's about me. And if I want to wear it, I'm going to wear it. So if I want to put myself in a position for God to bless me, and I believe and think it's in my heart that God's going to bless me for being obedient to what he's called me, say what you want to say. Because as for me, in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So the mind is so powerful. How many would admit that you have taught your, yourself about some blessings? You taught yourself. You 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 have you have maneuvered and, and manipulated your own thought pattern that you turned yourself away from a blessing. Then you want to blame the yeah. But if you perceive and think it's in your heart that God said do it, remember, I don't know how. But God's going to do it. I don't know where. But he's going to do what? But he's going to do it. Then I get bold. Somebody shout. God's going to make a way. As a man thinking. I'm in a jam right now. Don't look faithful. But God gonna do it. 
All I got to do is let my yes be yes. When it doesn't seem like you have any sense that God gave a dirt, and folks start turning their back on you, you better hold on to something. But he's going to do it. Do what? Victory. And sometimes they'll walk away from you. You just got to moan to yourself. Do it. And what are you talking about? Don't worry about me. I'm thinking in my heart that God is about to do this. And all it takes is a face the size of what? The size of what? But see, they much. God is not asking you for much. He said, trust me a little bit. Think on my goodness a little bit and watch and see what I'll do for you. And what he does for me is just for who? Me. Jesus came and did it for who? Just for me. Now, you can, you can make it personal. And ain't nothing wrong with making it personal. And you can have so much confidence that people believe that you're arrogant, but that's their problem. I know the God that I serve. Notice I didn't say believe. I graduated from believing in God. And I started knowing God. When it, he said, oh, taste and see. How do you know that you like cherry pie if you never taste it? You ever ask somebody, hey, you like something? No, I don't eat that. Have you ever tried? No. Well, how do you know you don't like it? How do you know? How are you going to reject something that you've never been exposed with the exception? Here's my, here's my uh, social awareness. Don't do drugs. Because if I'm trying to get higher, let me try to get higher with Jesus first. Amen? That's the kind of how they're going to get you locked up. Hello? That's the kind of how that when you come down, you ain't going to feel bad. Hello? That's the kind of how I ain't got to go and dark, dingy place to try to get a score. Because Jesus is everywhere. But when I position myself mentally, if you're going to go up against somebody who's bigger and stronger than you, and you're thinking in your mind, ain't no way I'm going to win. Why even show up? Why show up? Why do we fight? Why do we fight? Because we think we got a chance to win. Why are you fighting? If you think somebody gonna whoop you, you say, "Man, I ain't even waste my time with you." You come on, look at this guy, man. You ain't even worth. But you fight because you believe you can win. Do you believe the report of God when He says, "I will never leave you nor forsake you"? Do you believe the report of God when He says, "This battle is not yours; it's the Lord." So therefore, I gotta let my yes be yes. Lord, I don't know how I got here, but I know you can get me out of here. So I gotta give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself to you. Now that means I gotta put myself in some time where it seems to be a vulnerable position. Because what that man want to do, that man want to let you know, I'm a man, baby. I'm all man. Try me if you want. But watch what he gets you. But I say, I appreciate that. Put that testosterone in your back pocket and let me do this. And some of you sisters, I am woman, hear me roar. Maybe you can roar in the car. Let me take you at this. Understand that when your yes is yielded to God, what you're saying is, yes, Lord, I'm going to trust you in every step I take. In the song, all of my steps in your word, dear Lord, lead me, guide me every day. Sing your anointing, Father, I pray. All 
out of my steps. Y'all remember that? Listen, y'all still going. Go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Listen to what you're saying. You're saying, Lord, I'm going to let my yes be yes. Because then it goes, I want to walk according to what? According to God. Listen, Lord, it's not about me. It's not about me. I need to position myself and put myself in a jam, not in a jam, but in a position that if a jam comes up, I know who got me. They were doing this documentary on Troy Aikman the other day. I found out some stuff about Troy Aikman. I didn't know. I didn't know he had two daughters. But I did realize, and I give him credit to him credit. See, he's a good boy. He just played on a team I didn't like. Amen. We don't need the sidelines and sister friends. We'll have you removed. We'll have you removed out of here. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Amen. Hey. 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 I see some friends with me. No, I'm not going to say Well, you say cowboys and nerds, you jump it, don't you? But, 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 but the fact that he played on a team that I had no liking in doesn't take away that he was good. Just because you're in a situation with somebody who might not be on your A list don't mean that God can't bless you through them. Hello? So you gotta let your yes be yes. You trying to figure something out, God trying to work you through something so he can tell you and show you that I can use whoever I want to use to bless you. Because if my enemy is gonna be my footstool, stop running from your enemy and run towards your blessing. We don't want no struggles. Why? Because we only think about what we have to go through. But think about this. Everybody has had to go through something, had to go through a struggle. We talk about David. God said he was a man after his own heart. But David went through rejection through his own family. Joseph went through rejection through his own family. We got we got go on. So just because you reject it don't mean God has not blessed you. You got to get your mind right. Somebody say, get my mind right. So as you think it, so do you become. When you're a basketball player shooting a free throw, game on the line. I mean, it's on the line. You're a 50% free throw shooter. That means either you're going to make it or you're going to miss it. What goes on in your mind? See, here's the thing. Pressure triggers the mind one way or the other. If you say, Lord, I hope I don't miss it. I hope I don't miss it. I hope I don't miss it. What's going to happen? You're going to miss it. But if I see it through, release. See it through, release. Release. I got a greater chance of it. When well, God got you in a situation right now, and, and, and money is due, money is low, and, 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 and you don't know how it's going to work out, don't lean on self. Trust the process and let your yes be yes. I don't have to suit so low just to get a little dough. I don't have to go against the will of God just to say I got a little change in my pocket. Sometimes it's just best to be broke and watch God work on your behalf. Y'all heard Johnny said he's last two. All right, he ain't bring up look beautiful. I got a dollar in my beautiful. I've had that dollar all week. Amen. I have I have eaten every day. Why? Because I don't think about what I don't have. 
I think about what God said he's going to do and how he's going to do it. How did he say he's going to bless me? He said, any way I see fit to bless you is how I'm going to bless you. If you say you're hungry and God brings somebody in your path, hey, I got some extra sandwiches. Would you care for one? Thank you, Jesus. But you don't say, no, I don't eat the law. Well, you went hungry. You went hungry. Now, there's a way. If you prefer not to eat something, is it no thing? But if you say you're hungry, and even if you say you don't like it, you don't at least take a bite. Or pull the bread and eat the bread and the, and the lettuce and tomato or something. Amen. So you have to prepare yourself to receive what God would have for you to receive. You can't go around asking God for everything and you won't take nothing. But you got to start somewhere. How does a sandwich start? It starts with bread. Because if you eat a sandwich, <laughs> if you eat a, a hamburger without bread, it's not a hamburger, it's a salt very safe. Now we catch that one well. I mean, probably that's what's called there. Ain't nothing but a hamburger fat with some steaks also. That's all it is. So when I understand that Jesus has positioned me to be the very best that I can be, even if I'm at the lowest point of my life. Think about that. When David was in the cave hiding, took a raven. To bring them bread and meal. But this was still the one appointed to be king. But was he thinking that in his heart at that time? No. When you understand that God has spoken over your life, you got to remember that in the good and the bad. As I think it, so shall it be. Because remember the word that says, it is not. What goes into a man that defiles him? It's what's coming out. Because what comes out comes from the heart. If you call me a four-eyed, bald-headed monster, you miss that. Okay? Because before, before it came to your lips, it has to go through your mind, down to your heart, back through your heart, to your mind and out your mouth. It has to go through a process. So if you say it, you mean it. Now, do I take what you say to go against what God has already spoken? As I think it. Or not. And understand that don't do so to be seen. Do so because you know it's right. Does it make sense? Amen. For he says here, you ask me to eat and drink. And he said to thee, but his heart is not with me. Don't tell somebody if you need anything, call me and they call me like, oh my God. <laughs> what is going on? Are you, are you, you turn away from your phone like that's going to stop it from ringing? Are you laughing? Or it's in cackle, lazy. You know, oh, I didn't see it. No, stop. I had a good friend of mine call me yesterday. I was so tired yesterday. He called and said, Brother, I can't even talk right now. He's laughing. He said, I do understand. I do understand. It's okay that you get tired. God got tired and rested on the seventh day. It's okay if you. If you a little upset, God got upset that he ever made man. But it don't stop him from loving us. It doesn't stop him from, from making sure that the world knows that we're his prized possession. When the angels will say, what would make you so mindful of this wretched man? Because this wretched man was a product of me. It was an extension of me. So I got to get him to understand that whatever he's thinking, I'm going to be there for him. So I would have this scripture, as you think it in your heart, 
Your family could be not speaking to you right now, but God has a voice for you to hear. Your family might not want to have nothing to do with you right now, but God says, come unto me. So you have to understand, there is a season. Sometimes God will allow friction to come on the natural side to draw you closer on the spiritual side. But we don't see that. We don't see that. We want to. We, we let pride eat us up, and pride will eat us up to the point where we'll, we'll go and mess up the whole thing. When God say, "I'm really making a way of escape for you," but you got to realize. And they, they got word coming out. I hadn't verified it yet. About the young man, he played with the Patriots. He did whatever he did, and then he took his life behind some other accusations. I don't know. But is that too hard for God to bring you back home? Is that too hard for God to restore you if you desire to be restored? Or do we take matters into our own hands? Whenever you start taking matters into your own hand, you abort the honor and the privilege of God stepping in on your behalf. I had another man this week who was upset with his wife that he, he shot the wife, then went to the job and waited on the man to come to work, shot the man, and then I believe he shot his neighbor ten times with a shotgun. I don't think y'all understand the malice behind that. Ten times with a shotgun, not with a pistol. An automatic weapon. Do you realize with a shotgun you got to click, click, pow, click, click, pow? But if I'm thinking in my heart that this is the only way I can fix something, do I blame the devil for that? Or do I have to take some responsibility at some point for myself? Everything that goes bad in our lives is not everybody else's fault. Amen? <laughs> At some point, you got to say, okay, where's my part in this? I can't, be, I can't be by myself all the time because everybody's wrong. Hello? I can't be right all the time. But somebody has got to step up and say, Lord, here I am, here I am. And just that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When Jesus began the process of Calvary, <laughs> he had to let his yes be yes. He said, Lord, I'm weary and I'm heavy and I'm tired and I don't want to be bothered with these folks, but I told you I would go. I asked you to prepare me a body. So here I am, Lord. My yes is going to be yes. It's a frustrating road. It's an aggravating road. i got to believe and think it in my heart that God has already made a way of escape for me. Because he's made his way of escape, i got to trust the process. I don't like it. I don't want to deal with it. But I must need go through Samaria. When Jesus had to go back, they had always walked around Samaria. But he had to go through Samaria so he could meet that woman at the well. So he could change her thought process. Because the town had thought of her as the town harlot. But the same harlot was the one that drew a whole town to come see a man. So as you think it, don't tell you. And by show of hands, who ought to have done something that wasn't pleasing God in your life? Who ought to have done something so bad? that if folks next to you knew what you did, you'd run out of here right now. Let's stop God from loving you. But let's stop God from wanting the best for you. You got to learn how to say thank you for not killing me in my mess. You got to learn how to praise him at every opportunity you get. You got to learn how to say, boy, he gave me, he gave me a pass or something. I might as well get it right now. As Jesus said, get right, church, and let's go home. 
Because only what we do for Christ is going to last. But we understand that, and we hold fast to that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So as I begin to close, we understand that if I'm going to be used by God, it starts in my mind. Some of you are saying, well, Lord, I've done so much that I'm not worthy. You're the prime candidate. You got friends. You got loved ones. And when you all talk about the church, what do they say, man? The church, they be judging you and stuff. But you say, well, I wouldn't judge you. You know where I've been. You know what I've done. <laughs> so then why can't you be the front one? Why can't you be the Abraham of your family amongst your peers? Why can't you be the Sarah of your family and amongst your peers? You know what God has done for you, but yet you don't want to tell your buddy. Can I keep it? Can I keep it? And they say 100 with you. Some of my most deepest spiritual conversations before I converted over to the Lord was when I was high and drunk. Everybody want to be a philosopher then. Well, man, God is such, and why do we have this? And there's always been one in the crew that can try and semi-break it down. Well, see, man, this is what I believe. And so what are we really doing? We're really having church. It's just not a traditional form of church. He said, for Satan, not the what? Gathering yourself together. I don't want nobody to say, Pastor Ben said, we need to smoke some trees. We're going to be good in that church. They would hell the Pastor Ben because y'all were going to send me in here. No. What I'm saying is don't let a traditional way of doing things keep you from doing anything. I had a couple come to me yesterday. Pastor Prince, we, we come and visit you. We understand that you do need. If you stand crazy, I might be. But you need God's faith. Because there's nowhere in the scripture that tells me that I got to wear three pieces to get a search. Hello? It's as I think it. Yeah, that don't look right. You wearing jeans and a shirt. Hello, I didn't come for a fashion show. I came to restore my soul in the Word. So if you come for a fashion show, then maybe I suggest you go down the road. But I think it's in my heart that God has given me a word that needs to be said. And guess what? I'm not your show monkey either. I'm not here to entertain you. A couple of hours throughout the week and, and say, boy, that pastor me on it. No, no, no. I'm trying to help you discover some words that's going to help you and your family. Work on my family. Amen? If it's good for the gander, it's good for the goose. If not, then you can't be jumping up and down like a, like a, a, a jumping man. Sometimes you got to sit and let it soak in your soul. Sometimes you got to say, oh, Lord, oh, and not that I pissed you out. God pissed you out for such a time as this. Because I don't get in y'all's business like that. That ain't, that ain't how I operate. I meditate, Lord, give me what to give, share what to share, break down what needs to be broken down. And if you say, ouch, whew, okay, Lord, here I am. Don't be mad at me. I ain't ever coming back. It wasn't my fault, I'm just a mess. And the word is, if you want to save the world, you save the world. You let your actions show that as you think. Don't be like that passage, I invite you to dinner and I don't want you to eat. Or well, I said, welcome to my home and I can't stand you in my home. Because who is that really on now? That's really on me. I'm the phony. I'm the hypocrite. I say, you're welcome, welcome, welcome. You're like, oh, my God, I couldn't leave it in the lead. You didn't give us the Lord to give me. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You know? But see, we're here. We're not here to judge. We're here to help. 
So sometimes folks think what they're doing is right. Let me help y'all. The Ku Klux Klan was built on quote unquote Christian principles. They thought they were right. And some still think they're right. Now, I'm going to let God deal with that. So if they can think they're right, I ought to be able to think and know that I'm right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall have what? Everlasting life. I believe that I still can't think. And if I can't think it nor believe it, I can't pass that message. And if I can't pass that message, I do not deserve to be called a preacher. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you've done it with. Don't care how you've done it. The question is, he said, come, I'll give you rest. I'm here to help you find your resting place. I don't care if you come up here smelling like, like a bar on one side, a, a, a smokehouse on the other side. That's not my problem. That's not my concern. My concern is, do you believe the report of what God said about you and your life? And if you believe it, come here. Because as I think it in my heart, if you make that step to the Lord, the Lord's going to meet you, and he's going to start working on you. That's what I preach. That's what I teach. Because that's what I believe, and I think it in my heart. So when you hear the word being a witness for God, it ain't necessarily you standing out on the corner. Giving our fighting shot. You know, that's really powerful. And, and, and shout, condemnation. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Come here, son, real quick. Come here, son. This is a witness and son. I mean, I understand that we all struggle. Let me tell you what God did. I used to think act certain ways. That's witnessing. And ain't nobody got to hear it. You got to prove it by toting the Bible. What you Toting the Bible, we're talking about, I'm so glad on, and I'm sanctity, and I'm filled with the Holy. You know, I'm walking around, I'm walking around. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Put it on the front. God ain't for me to that. He said, I think it needs a. You try to get specified points by, by a, a, a point on me. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to shake your foundation. You're going to hide out for the Lord. But it's not your heaven. It's not you looking in a mirror. Okay, I'm just going to go two to the left, two to the right, cross, crisscross, hop up, drop my head. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's going to look good. God's not concerned about that. Or you're going to practice it on your tongues. Here we go, John. Here we go, John. Here we go. Come on, Charles. 
Focus, so they ain't got nothing to do with you. Come on, God is coming on a Honda real soon. God is coming on a Honda real soon. Say it again. God is coming on a Honda real soon. Fast. God is the real Faster. God is the real Faster. God is the real Faster. 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 Then he ran out of his <laughs> I went through Charles. Charles said, I'm out of here to be loose. But what I'm trying to say, that don't make you. As you figure it in your heart, if they never hear me speak in tongues, don't mean I'm not saved. And folks put an unnecessary pressure on themselves to be accepted by folks who don't even love you, let alone like you. But we want to be accepted. This is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. I got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. You think you run out of money? You know they weren't saved to begin with. But when you know what the Word of God has said about you, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that He is Lord, then you shall be saved. Paul got on the Corinthian church. Y'all doing all this song speaking and God, that ain't even no language. Yeah. You don't even have an interpreter. If you're going to speak that, you at least have an interpreter that is not shut up and give it to God. But you want to be seen. You want to be heard. You want to be identified as the one. And when it counts, if a government came to here right now, how many holy no fear folks? You mean, I got oh, my As you think it, let your yes be yes. Let your yes be yes. I'm going to share this story, and I'm going I'm to let us a preacher in Africa. And they kept telling him, stop preaching the gospel. Something bad going to happen. They were meeting in a little two-story deal, and they were up on the second floor trying to hide it. Army found out where he was having service. And they rushed in the service, grabbed his little daughter, threw her out the window to her death. They said, we told you to stop having service. Something bad was going to happen. He's laying there. And he looks out and sees his lifeless daughter. I want y'all to, I want y'all to, and this ain't made up. Life is going away in there, thrown out of the window because he was preaching the gospel. And his wife went down and grabbed her baby, lifeless body, came back upstairs, sat down at the front row. Holding her life was made and said, preach. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She told him, preach. That's power. That's the anointing. That's the Holy Ghost. Holding your own child that you gave birth to. And the father watching this woman that we created this blessing through God and is laying that life because I stood at the altar and I thought in my heart that what I was speaking was true. Let your yes be yes. That man preached the gospel and preached the gospel that folks came to the Lord that day because you let your yes. Yes. 
I don't want us to be challenged to an extreme of that nature. But as the old Gatorade question asks, is it in you? Is it in you to let your yes be yes? I want to pray for strength for our walk. I don't want you to ask God for nothing this morning. I want your strength, my strength, to be increased in him. Because, see, we ask for things. And things don't matter when it comes to my eternal soul. Because as soon as he gives me the things, he's ready to check you out of here. They don't think of things. But it's the soul that God is concerned about. Everyone that can, stand in, please. I need you to grab that person next to you. Praise the Lord. Just help me say Give myself away. I give myself away so you and you can. I give myself away. Oh God. Give myself away so you can use me. My life, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you, to you I and I give. I give myself. I give myself. I give. I give myself away. Oh God.
Hallelujah. God is good all the time. How many believe that for real? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God so loved the world. 